In yet another horrific terror attack on Thursday evening, two Indian Army soldiers were killed in action along with two porters when terrorists attacked an army vehicle in North Kashmir's Baramula district. Massive search operations are currently underway to nab the terrorists. Authorities have suspended the Gandola cable car service for tourists in Gulmarg as the search operations continue even as we speak right now. This attack comes merely days after the terror attack in Gandharbal of central Kashmir where seven innocent civilians working on a connectivity project, a tunnel, were mercilessly killed as well. A migrant worker was also attacked and injured in Thral of South Kashmir yesterday but survived. Now the questions that we are asking on the News 9 Plus show tonight. Is this the return of the most brutal form of Pakistan-sponsored terrorism in Kashmir five years after the Article 370 nullification? Is the Pakistan deep state carefully targeting connectivity projects and tourist hotspots to target economic activity in Jammu and Kashmir, which has seen an increase over the last few years? And how will India now calibrate its response militarily to Pakistan-sponsored terrorism, not just in the Jammu region, but now also a revival of sorts happening in the Kashmir Valley. Joining me to discuss this and a lot more, General Adha Hasnain, uh, former GOC of the 15th Corps, also member of the NDMA. We also have senior journalist Ahmed Ali Fayaz joining us and Dr. Ajit Singh, senior fellow of the Institute of Conflict Management. Uh, if I can begin by asking uh, General Hasnain, uh, so if I can, you know, understand from you, you know, what is really happening in the Kashmir Valley? We have been speaking about the return of peace, a return of calm, a kind of a suffocation for the terrorists, really. But they seem to be now targeting connectivity projects, tourist hotspots. In fact, now we know that Gandola service has been uh, temporarily suspended. You, as someone who can perhaps, you know, walk in Baramulla with his closed eyes and, you know, treat Baramulla as his second home. Uh, how do you see this development, sir? Thank you, Aditya. A very, very pertinent question. Let me try and explain this. You see, uh, over the last five years, the government of India, the Indian security forces, the government of Jammu Kashmir have all worked with very close consensus with each other and uh, brought the situation to a near normal. The number of networks have been neutralized here and the capability of Pakistan to be able to calibrate, uh, carry out big acts of terror here has been reduced to a very great extent. However, at no stage can we ever claim that uh, a neighbor state got a boundary with us, uh, or very porous boundary to that matter, uh, is going to withdraw its uh, complete uh, capability, its intent, and uh, accept a kind of a defeat. It is going to calibrate further and continue to do these activities. Obviously, they are not in a position to do big acts at the moment. The strength of terrorists is also low. The amount of finances are which, are which are comparatively low. And the government of India will have been able to make great inroads into people's support. So they decided to go into Jammu to the Jammu region, which was comparatively weaker. More voids there, as we are aware. Forces had moved out from there to the line of actual control. They exploited this past one and a half years or so, in the month of June, we also spoke, we discussed on your program, lots of activities were happening in June, post the Lok Sabha election. I always said, Jammu is a sideshow. They are doing it for the tactical ploy. They're taking our attention there. They are going to come back to Kashmir because that's the center of gravity. That's exactly what they have done, of course, the, uh, the setting up the Omar Abdullah government. No, they can't do big acts here very easily. The deployment of the Indian Army, the rest of the security forces, is fairly large. And the, especially the urban centers like Anantanag, Paramula, Shupia, Srinagar are very, very well held. You will find small actions taking place like the ones we found on the day of uh, the inauguration of the government, the day the election results were given, uh, kidnapping of a TA soldier, the killing of a migrant labor. Yesterday, Tral, again, the killing or attempted killing of a migrant labor. And if they have to target security force facilities, they will hit peripheral areas. And that's exactly what happened. They hit Gandharbal. Now, Gandharbal is a misnomer. They hit actually Zojila, near yeah. Zojila. Yeah. That's an infrastructure uh, project there. In fact, that very day on a certain program and my discussions with a lot of people, I said, is going to go back to peripheral areas again. Uh, Aditya, if you give me a minute more, I'll just explain. Sure. This is exactly what happened in 2015. 
Yes. In 2015, the 6th of December, we had an incident at a place called Mora on the in the Jhelum Valley mm -hmm. on a gun position of the Indian Army. No one would have expected a, a thing like that happening in the Jhelum. Why did it happen? Because inside Kashmir, uh, the security system was very strong. It is near the line of actual, the, near the line of control that inroads could be made. Small elements could come in, two to three men could come in, one to two nights worth of infiltration, come strike and perhaps get back. Mm -hmm. Now, on yesterday's incident in Gulmarg, this is in a place called Bhuta Patri. Since I've commanded this division, I can yes. relate to it so much. The place called Bhuta Patri, this is from seven kilometers from Gulmarg. There is no threat to the gondola as such. It was primarily to target a military facility. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a camp there. And there is a winding road from there which goes to the line of control. Anywhere on that road, a vehicle can be ambushed. So the, what the army has to do today is to make sure that all these logistics movements which go on to the line of control have to be done in a tactical manner with full security. Now that uh, is imposing a lot of caution on yourself in a situation where you were at liberty to move around and do what you wished. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that they have taken precautions on the gondola and things like that. We do not want things like uh, tourist facilities, etc. being targeted. We are in the month of October. This is a tourist season, October, November. We want Kashmir to be full of tourists at this time. And that's what the people in the deep state on the other side do not want. Absolutely. Very well explained there by General Hasnain as to how th things have progressed. The main target for the Pakistani terrorists really seems to be Kashmir and Jammu perhaps was a sideshow temporarily. Ahmed Ali Fayaz, if I can come to you, uh, a veteran journalist covering Kashmir for decades together. Mr. Fayaz, uh, what is the message of Pakistan really uh, in this entire attack that has taken place? Also, do you think, at least in the last five to six years, this is perhaps for the first time, that such a very carefully planned attack is taking place uh, very close to Gulmarg, in fact, only 12 kilometers from the main tourist spot, uh, where I believe I've been reading a little bit of a dark web where it says that they were planning this for last three months. They were carefully studying the pattern of the army convoy movements and doing this. What does this tell you, Mr. Fayaz? Yes, Aditya, this is a fact that this kind of incident has taken place in Kashmir after after many, many years, I don't remember when the last incident took place. Uh, the big incident, which everybody knows, that was that was the February 2019, when as many as 40 CRPF men were killed in a Fidain attack at Avantipura. Thereafter, there have been operations and encounters, but all those operations have been initiated by the security forces and the Jammu and Kashmir police, and most of them have been conducted successfully. Uh, it were the uh, terrorists and uh, are the people who suffered the casualties. Sometimes uh, there were casualties on the other side also, but most of the casualties were suffered by the militants themselves. So the, many incidents were not in Ika Dukha Kuch Vakat Hote Hote As you, uh, you, you said and General Hasnan also referred to some incidents, the kidnapping of a soldier last week in Kokarnag Koka area and thereafter two more uh, in, separatic incidents of uh, uh, attacks on civilians, non-local uh, laborers, such kind of attacks attacks have been happening in Kashmir. But uh, these two particular incidents, the Gagangir as well as this Batapatri, these are significant in the sense that, uh, that uh, uh, in our memory, in the last 10, 15 years, no such uh, uh, attack has taken place in Kashmir. They started it with the Prime Minister's uh, swearing in on 9th of June with the with their attack on the Shiv Khodi pilgrims in Jammu. But uh, other uh, incidents were, were, were clear attacks on security forces. But in Kashmir, there was no such attack. Only two incidents have taken place in the last two years. That was one in Kulgam and one in Kokarnag. And uh, we believe that they were ambushes, but not this type of attacks. These are, we call it Jammu type attacks, because such kind of attacks have taken place over a dozen of such attacks in the Rajori and Poonch districts, I think a couple of them in other places also. So this is a new signal. This is a, it has been clearly communicated that we are very mature and we can uh, start it anytime. Uh, but I'm sure that unlike in Jammu where uh, we have noticed that there is not a, 
uh, a very high standard of uh, contact liaison between the security forces and the civilian population there. It's in Kashmir. It is excellent. I can tell you that that uh, the security forces who are in search of the of the terrorists who uh, carried out yesterday's uh, attack at uh, Bhatpathri, I'm sure about it that they will get them. Right. Uh, in spite of the fact that this is an area very close to the LOC, I have been to the area. Uh, General Hastain has been there many times. He has headed a division. Um, so I have been there last year also. So it, this road, this 12-kilometer road, which leads from uh, Gulmarg Baul to High Altitude Warfare School to the to to Bat, Bat Patri, it is as General Hastain said, it can be attacked, it can be ambushed anywhere. So, but for a common man. This road, the Tangmar Gulbar, 13 kilometer roads, it has it has become now vulnerable because many people will think twice before traveling on the road. Right. Particularly the pe people who uh, who have security risks, the, and, and also the and also the tourists. And both these incidents, Gagangir as well as Badpatri, have taken place in close proximity, in close vicinity of two major tourist hubs in Kashmir. This is something very. Uh, disturbing and very surprising. Well, absolutely, it's disturbing and certainly the concerns that you have for the tourists, especially in the last three years that Jammu and Kashmir has seen a tourism boom, uh, what the, what kind of an impact will this terror attack have it, on it? Uh, Dr. Ajit Singh, if I can come to you, uh, do you also see a subtle messaging there, you know, from Pakistan and perhaps China as well uh, with this particular terror attack that is taking place near Gulmarg, also the one that took place in Gagangir in Gandharbal, carefully chosen targets, connectivity projects, uh, tourist locations. Uh, is the economic activity boom in Jammu and Kashmir certainly something that Pakistan cannot digest? Also, what we saw a few days ago was India opposing the BRI and the CPEC at the SEO meet in Islamabad. Uh, we have seen also the Baloch attack taking place on, uh, you know, the Chinese workers, etc., continuously, the latest one just a couple of weeks ago. Do you see some kind of a messaging there against economic activity in JNK, both from Pakistan and Chinese? It may be a reason for that, but if we uh, see the data and the trend, the situation is not as bad as it is being uh, reflected or is, that is being trying to be portrayed. True. Because the overall fatalities in Kashmir is on the, is on the downward trend since uh, 2019 onwards, but in 2020 when it increased uh, marginally. In fact, when we are speaking as of now in 2024, only 106 fatalities have taken place. And uh, since 1990, when the when terrorism peaked in Kashmir, in each year between 1990 to 2007, the fatalities were in four digits. And then they started coming down in three digits. And in 2012, it came down to 121. It is the lowest ever fatality. And if we come back, if we get back to this 2024, it is still 106. And uh, in terms of security forces fatalities also, these numbers are low because in 2024, as of now, when we're speaking, around uh, 25 security forces have been killed. Before that, the lowest number of <clears throat> security forces killed were in 2018 and that was around 18 security forces. Though number of civilians have increased, uh, the fatalities have increased this year, but still these numbers are not as high as they were earlier on. Mm -hmm. So this is a situation. But as far as economic activities are concerned, yes, but these areas have not been targeted for the first time. These areas were targeted earlier also. So to link with this BRI or the Chinese pressure or the economic activities, I don't think it is the only reason, but yes, these days, the form of terrorism is changing. The, the tactics are being changed. So this may be one of the reasons also. But to see it only in economic terms, is not. I don't think is the only the sole reason. But yes, the situation in Kashmir is not as uh, grim or as uh, bad as it is being portrayed. The main reason what I feel is, is the change of uh, governance. In fact, the civilian government has been established there. And there may be some pressure on Pakistan and the ISI that now that the civilian, because this is the one reason and after this abrogation of 317 in 2019, there were pressure on Pakistan to create some problem in Kashmir, but the Indian security forces did their best and Kashmir in fact returned to uh, uh, peace uh, in spite of having so many 
you know all the pundits saying that kashmir will burn and kashmir will go back to the 1990s situation but it didn't happen now that the, uh, and even the elections the lok sabha elections earlier and this time the assembly elections were held so peacefully that the people sitting in pakistan are very much perturbed and these incidents may be the reflection of that uh, worriedness and that uh, discomfort in the isi and the pak and the deep state that these incidents are taking place but what i believe is that uh, the the kind of control the security forces have on the ground is not going to let them uh, do all these activities for a longer period because right. the entire entire leadership of the uh, terror uh, terror groups the major terror groups have been decimated there are no command there there the none of the commander uh, long serving commanders are surviving now any sort of any commander who is coming uh, now are being decimated in you uh, know i think in months or maximum in four months five months six months so mm. in this situation i don't think that there is going to be any adverse impact right. on the situation security situation in kashmir fair enough you know even as we speak unfortunately the death toll has increased now one more soldier has been killed in action uh, that's what we are hearing three indian army soldiers and two porters now in the gulmarg attack uh, but general hasnan i have a two part question for you one uh, how do you see the response now of course there are massive search operations and ahmed ali fayaz also mentioned on how civilians uh, and perhaps uh, you know sources of the indian army that is from the civilian population will be certainly helping uh, the army to nab Uh, these terrorists but uh, you know i was reading the rising kashmir newspaper this morning it also mentioned that the overall tourism figures have surpassed 2.6 million this also includes more than 35000 foreign tourists this is only the figure from 1st of january this year to the 30th of september so that clearly also indicates how well uh, the economic activity really is happening in this particular area but Uh, how how do you see how do you sense the road ahead for the government of india and particularly uh, for the national security apparatus uh, when it comes to these continuous terror attacks mainly the you know uh, migrant workers connectivity projects anybody from outside apart from military uh, are the primary targets the other thing it is it would be very insensitive on my part to say that uh, the number of casualties is so much lesser than what it was before but sure. i still believe the death of a single indian the death of a single indian soldier is something which is not acceptable to me. and that is what i my whole comment my whole analysis is always based upon i agree that the situation in the valley is not of major concern these are sporadic incidents i am from that generation when i was handling 14 encounters 14 to 15 encounters in one afternoon Right. Today, if you have an encounter in two months or three months, you consider yourself professionally, yeah, something is good has happened, right? So, yes, the situation has improved tremendously. There's no doubt about it. But I would only like to draw one small aspect of attention here. We should also look at the ratio of how many soldiers we have lost compared to the number of terrorists we have killed. Mm -hmm. The ratio. You know, these ratios. I have not got the figures with me at the moment, but in the past, we had figures of. For every soldier we lost, we had nine terrorists killed, eight terrorists. In the year 2017, we came down at one state to one is to one, which was a very very worrying uh, kind of a situation. Today, in the Jammu sector, particularly, you know, the last three four months, it's not been a very good situation. We've lost a large number of soldiers, and we've not been able to eliminate that. So many times, when you're looking at terrorism and counterterrorism, you judge it from this angle also, and this always happened. when i uh, assess that when terrorism is coming to a uh, a, a end state this is the time when all this kind of thing happens because you know you are hunting for the last terrorist you're going after him energetically you do suffer more casualties and you kill far lesser terrorists so that starts worrying the state it starts worrying everyone actually it means should not worry us too much except for the fact that we do not want any of our loss of our dear our soldiers and the loss of our citizens in kashmir having right. said that i uh, would say gulmarg first of all i would disagree that uh, we have not had attacks we have had attacks in, not in gulmarg as such but in the vicinity around and uh, there would be some cases uh, today also where they would try and 
target these kind of peripheral areas, as I said, these are the kind of areas where deployment is not so heavy. Gulmarg is very well defended from a, from a conventional angle, extremely well defended. But from a counter-terror angle, I can't rem remember the last terrorist incident which has happened in Gulmarg. Mm -hmm. And as such, the attention hasn't really been there. But as we continue to assess the situation today, we will realize that our attention has to keep going to those peripheral areas where the deployments are lesser. Right. For example, nothing has happened in Kupwana for quite some time. I would be paying attention to a lot of attention to the line of control in the Kupwana area, in the Tangdhar area, in the Uri area and places like that. Because most of the activities have been in the central Kashmir. Mm -hmm. And that too sporadic incidents against a single terrorist or against a migrant labor or something like that which has happened. I suspect that before the winter closes, there will be one or two attempts from the other side to try mm -hmm. and perhaps hit us across the line of control. Now, that's a very dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in that case, you know, uh, terrorists who come in, they try and calibrate to try and get one or two soldiers or something across the line of control. They can end up perhaps having many more casualties. Mm -hmm. There could be a large number of soldiers killed and a large number of terrorists killed. And that can up the temperatures on the line of control hugely when things go out of control. I only hope that that kind of a situation does not come. Right. But we need to be fully, fully prepared for this kind of Well, certainly this is a serious concern and I'm sure the Indian Army and the other security forces are very much uh, in operation, ready and perhaps uh, will ta you know counter any kind of an eventuality. But General Hustain, we have this uh, you know Kashmiri saying Anyam soy, vavam soy, lajam soy, pansi. That means that, you know, you, you reap what you sow. And I should mention here, just 12 hours back, there's been a major terror attack in Pakistan as well, in Dera Ismail Khan, in which 11 frontier core Pakistani soldiers have been killed and there are close to 7 to 20 who have been injured. So I don't know what Pakistan really is achieving out of what they are doing. But Ahmed Ali Fayaz, last comment to you. Uh, on the overall political situation also, Umar Abdullah returning to power, and then again, these terror attacks increasing. Uh, what would be the priority, uh, you would say, uh, for the government of India and the local government of Omar Abdullah? Do you see more coordination happening between centre uh, and, of course, the state government, the UT government? Because uh, if there is a hurdle, if there is a gap, if there is a confrontation, that could perhaps lead to gaps that could be in the advantage of the terrorists and their adversaries. So, yesterday's meetings with the Prime Minister, the Defence Minister, and day before yesterday, the Home Minister, do you see a well coordination uh, of the UT administration led by Omar Abdullah and the central government? Yes, this camaraderie has uh, begun at a very positive note. Mr. Omar Abdullah, who is now Chief Minister, he went to Delhi. After a lot of politics, there have been two elections, bitterly contested elections between the National Conference and the BJP. Uh, count, counter allegations and allegations and counter allegations against uh, uh, individuals and the parties that all is now over. It's the time that there has to be a, a coordination between the uni, Union Territory Government and the Central Government. As of now, as everybody knows, that uh, the, it's the Government of India which is holding the control of the Home Department, uh, entire Jammu and Kashmir Police, and the security forces which were already under their control. So there is no substituted, no alternative to it. This coordination has to be built up. Uh, there must be total support from the uh, from from government of India. There has to be a coordination between the Minister of Home Affairs and the Minister of Defence and the central and state agencies. This is the time that they cannot play politics against each other. This is the time that uh, they must come uh, and 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 they must also leave no stone unturned to boost tourism and trade in Kashmir. That is very important. It's clear that these attacks on, on, are on Kashmir's peace, on Kashmir's trade and tourism, because I have mentioned the two spots. These are the uh, tourist hubs, Sonmarg as well as Gulmarg. So the government of India must give complete reassurance to the tourists who are visiting Kashmir. They, I have apprehensions that some people can go for cancellations uh, I have received, I have been receiving calls uh, since the first attempt, first, first, first attack, which happened at Gagangir by from some hoteliers and the people who are associated with the tourism industry. Right. Some people have have, have cancelled their bookings, but th th there has to be complete reassurance from the UT administration, from the government of India, and mm -hmm. uh, particularly the, the the routes, particularly this uh, Pahalgam, 
this uh, Anantnag Pahalgam Road as um, uh, Tangmarg and Gul Gulmarg Road. Fair enough. There has to be, there has to be rein reinforce on it, and there has to be better coordination between the between the agencies. That that's very 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 important. I don't think that this is the time that there should be any uh, politics. Uh, there are some some people who have lost to the elections and they are leaving no stone unturned mm -hmm. to create a wedge between the center and the uh, and the UT administration and they are they, they are doing all that. But this is the time that. Uh, that, that that the chief minister and the prime minister, home minister, defence minister, they all must show uh, absolutely uh, maturity, and it is a very positive sign that Mr. Amar Abdullah has gone to Delhi. He has met prime minister and all these ministers there uh, at a very cordial note, at a very positive note. Th these are uh, good indications. Fair enough. Indications. I'm out of time, I'm afraid, but we will get you back, uh, Dr. Ajit Singh, Ahmed Ali Fayaz, and General Hussain. Always a pleasure uh, to have you for your valuable comments. Certainly. The latest air attacks in the Kashmir Valley are a wake-up call and certainly uh, something isn't well in the Kashmir Valley with several casualties being reported both in Gandharbal and in Baramulla. Certainly something that we'll keep our eyes on. Thanks for watching.